Hi y'all, welcome back to my channel. How are you doing today? I am finally back for another video. It's been quite a while since I did a video like this, but I am excited to share this with you. Today, I wanna to talk about doing a through hike on a budget. More specifically, being able to do a through hike with less money. So stick around. If you've ever dreamed of doing a long distance hike, but don't think you can budget enough money to cover the expenses for spending months out on the trail, I have some tips that may help you through hike on a much lower budget. Oh, and before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and make sure you're subscribed below. All right, without further ado, let's get into it. If you've been doing your research online, you'll find that the most common budget recommendation for a long distance hike is around $1,000 per month. In 2022, a budget of around $2,000 per month is a lot more realistic. Of course, not everyone can save that kind of money to do a long distance hike. Whether you have other expenses that keep you from being able to put aside a lot of savings, or you just don't want to spend that much money on a six month trek, there are ways to do a long distance hike on a much lower budget. When I did my through hike at the Appalachian Trail in 2020, I made a point to save as much money as I could because I knew I wanted to experience as much of the trail as possible and also be financially comfortable enough to do that. Although for personal reasons, I've chosen to not share how much I spent on my hike, you can find other hikers online who shared how much their expenses were for their trek. But it's important to keep in mind that a through hike is as individual as the person who hikes. And while one person may spend a certain amount during their time on trail, your hike will most likely look very different. How much you spend on a through hike depends on many factors, including your pace, the miles you hike per day, how long it takes you to finish, the number of zeros you take, where you choose to stay, whether you get injured and have to take time off trail, how much food you eat, and any gear you may have to replace during your hike. My personal recommendation is to try to save as much money as possible, even if you have to delay your hike for a few years. That way you'll have plenty enough money to enjoy all aspects of the trail. But if waiting years isn't possible, or you know a large budget just isn't in the cards for your hike, then there are ways to hike on whatever budget you have available, even if it's less than $1,000 per month. Yes. So here's some of my personal tips on how to spend less money on your next through hike. After spending days and weeks on the trail braving the elements and the terrain, your body will be ready for a much needed break. A zero day is where you don't hike any trail miles, but zeros in town can eat up your budget fast. Keep in mind that one zero equals two nights lodging expenses. If you think about it, before you take a zero, you go into town the night before and then take the next day off from the trail. So basically you're taking two nights off trail. That's double the expenses when you take a zero. Let alone when you're not hiking, you're more likely to go into town and eat town food and spend more money. A good way to lessen the number of zeros you take is to only take Nero's when you go into town. A Nero is where you hike nearly no miles on the trail. This may mean only hiking two to three miles and going into town for resupply, food, and a good night's sleep. Taking zeros eliminates one night in town. The best way to save a lot of money and still be able to take zeros during your hike is to take a zero in a shelter or your tent. Just make sure you have an extra day of food in your pack and check the area where you're camping to be sure there aren't any restrictions on the number of nights you can stay at one campsite or shelter. Staying in a hostel on the trail will almost always be cheaper than staying in a hotel. Not only are they cheaper stays, they typically cater to hikers and have more of the necessities needed during a hike, such as laundry, showers, gear, and food. You can save even more money when staying in a hostel by choosing to bunk or tent camp. Many hostels do offer private accommodations, but at a much higher cost. Finding donation-based hostels like churches or gymnasiums can save you money as these are based on what you can afford to pay or are free. If staying in a hostel isn't an option, another way to save money when staying at a hotel is to share a room with other hikers. Most hotels will accept one to four people per room and that can save you a lot of money. Although having the availability of a shuttle service to and from the trail is an incredible convenience, it can also eat up your money pretty quickly. 
One way to cut your expenses is to hitch a ride into town and back to the trail. Of course, for safety reasons, I suggest always hitching with another hiker if possible. Knowing the cost of the shuttle up front can help you decide if it's affordable for you. Many shuttles charge by the ride and some charge per person. Always ask up front before booking so you aren't surprised at pickup. Sharing a shuttle with other hikers can help cut the expense of a shuttle into town. Just make sure the shuttle doesn't charge per person. Slide packing is where you hike all day but don't spend the night on the trail. You still carry your pack but you remove items like your tent, sleeping bag, and other items you don't need for spending the night on the trail. The advantage is it cuts your pack weight and allows you a more enjoyable, faster hike letting you make bigger miles in one day. The downside is you'll need to use a shuttle service to take you to and from the trail as well as carry your extra supplies. This can become pretty costly pretty quickly. So it's best to not do any slide packing if you want to save money. Unless of course you're fortunate enough to have a wonderful trail angel who's willing to slide pack you during your hike. Ow, my leg is cramping. <laughs> Another great way to save money is by planning your resupply before going into town. It's easy to buy extra food when you stay pretty hungry after all the miles you do on trail. So knowing what you will need will keep you from overspending. I recommend downloading a list app or grocery store apps so that you can make a list of what you need and know the cost up front. Another money saving tip is to buy cheaper foods like ramen, rice, oatmeal, instant mashed potatoes, or pasta sides. These items typically cost the least and can be pretty filling. Also consider shopping at stores like Dollar General, Dollar Tree, or Walmart. Food at these stores is always cheaper and the most expensive food on trail is typically found in convenience stores or gas stations. Dividing your resupply with another hiker can help you both save money. Before going into town for resupply, collaborate to see if you plan to purchase some of the same food. Because many items are in larger quantities or portions, you may be able to divide the cost in half or more. This is a pretty easy one to figure out, but for many hikers, this is a cost that can add up pretty quickly. If you do want to enjoy an adult beverage every now and then on the trail, make sure to set a budget. I think one of the things through hikers most look forward to is town food. A hot cooked meal is unbeatable on the trail, but this cost can add up super quickly, especially if you eat at a sit down restaurant and will need to include tipping in your total. A hiker is usually pretty hungry and it's easy to overbuy food. Set a budget for what you're willing to spend on town food so you're more aware of what you're buying. Hiker boxes can be found at many businesses and hostels along the trail. They usually contain gear and food items left by other hikers and trail angels. These boxes are meant to be used by hikers along the trail to help with those who need food or gear. Just keep in mind that these boxes are for all hikers, so only take one or two items from a box. And be sure to leave any gear or food item you are using in the box for the next hiker. Not carrying a stove can be another way to save money. Cold soaking is a method where hikers rehydrate their food with cold water instead of using boiling water. By cold soaking food, you can still enjoy ramen, potatoes, and rice without carrying a stove. Isobutane fuel can be rather expensive and hard to find on the trail at times. It also adds additional weight to your pack. Not heating your food on the trail allows you to save on the expense of fuel or buying a stove. But if you just can't live without a hot meal on the trail, you can purchase or make your own alcohol stove. Many ultralight hikers carry these as a way to save weight and to make it easier to purchase fuel in town at a much cheaper cost. Keeping track of what you spend on the trail is a surefire way to not only save money, but stay in budget. I suggest downloading a budget app that will not only allow you to set a budget, but help you keep up with your expenses. If you make a point to keep track of what you spend that first month of your hike, it will help give you an idea of where you may be able to cut back on expenses or possibly have additional money to spend. cheaper gear doesn't mean buying poor quality gear. You can find good quality gear at cheaper prices by searching online. You can join Facebook groups for the trail you're hiking, shop Facebook marketplace, join Facebook groups that are selling backpacking gear, or shop at discount gear websites. You can also save money by purchasing gear during sales such as on Black Friday or during REI garage sales. 
I suggest subscribing to as many gear company emails as possible because they send out frequent discounts and sales emails. You may also want to reach out to gear companies for a potential ambassadorship or contact them about possibly offering you a special discount. As more and more hikers are hitting the trail, those last two options might not be a possibility, but it doesn't hurt to ask. Ultimately, I recommend starting your research for your gear as early as possible to give yourself plenty of time to find a good deal. And be sure to know the return policy on any item that you purchase before testing out the gear. Hopefully, these tips will help you spend less money on your next long distance hike. Even if you're not looking to save money, these tips can be helpful in making you more mindful of what you spend during your hike. Decide what's most important to you, whether it's saving enough money to alleviate any financial worries or to be able to have the opportunity to spend time out in the woods even with a tight budget. Basically, it comes down to what you're willing to sacrifice to do a through hike. Let me know in the comment below if you have any great tips on how to save money on a through hike. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so that I can see you on the next video. Until then, happy hiking!